In this video, I would like to explore a little bit more what pulleys do for us. So pulleys show up in a lot of physics problems, and understanding how a physicist thinks about pulleys will make those make a little more sense to you. So let's imagine that you have some object that you want to lift. Okay, so maybe this is a piano or something, um, and you want to lift it with a rope. Well, it's hard to lift straight up with just like pulling up on the rope. So what we typically would want to do is have the rope go over a pulley, like this, and then you could have a person over here who is, you know, um, bracing against the ground and pulling on this pulley. Okay, so um, by exerting a tension over here, um, that the pulley is going to transfer that into a tension upwards, um, and then the um, object, whatever it is we're trying to lift, has a gravitational force downwards. Okay, so the pulley is essentially just changing the direction of that tension force so that it's easier um, for a person to pull on it. Now, in this case, the tension has to be equal to the gravitational force in order to be able to lift the object. Um, we don't need it to accelerate, we just want it to move upward at a steady pace. So what happens then um, if we want to have additional pulleys? So one pulley doesn't help that much, it just makes it so the um, angle we're pulling is easier. But what if we add another one? So imagine that we have the same object that we want to lift, but this time, instead of having the pulley situation that I had in the first one, what if we have the rope attached to the ceiling, and then I have a pulley attached to the piano now, and the rope goes up around another pulley, and then down um, for the person that is lifting it. Well, this time, we still have the same gravitational force downward on the object. The weight of the object hasn't changed. But this time, we have two different tensions. We have a tension one over here, and a tension two over here. And those two tensions are going to be equal to each other because they're attached to the same string that's going over an ideal pulley. And so um, in this case, we have T1 plus T2 equals G in order to balance out the forces on that um, object. So this time, the tension um, only needs to be one half as big as the gravitational force in order to be able to lift the object. And we can actually do that multiple times. So we can do even better if we want to um, gain more advantage in lifting up this object. Okay, so let's say that we have this piano or whatever. And this time, I'm going to have um, the rope go over a pulley like this and go down over another pulley like this and then go up over another pulley like that and then go down and I'll have it go around another pulley which will be attached kind of like this uh, and then like that so we'll kind of have this go like this and then the person pulling on the rope over here. Well so now we have tension one pulling here and then two, three, four, five. Okay so we have five um, times that this tension is lifting upwards on the object, um, and we only have the, the tension force being exerted once over here. Okay, so gravitational force downward, but we have five tensions upward. Okay, so this time, all five of those tension forces together only have to add up to the gravitational force. So in this case, the tension only needs to be one-fifth of the gravitational force. So this is a real advantage. Um, potentially, you could have an object that weighs a thousand pounds, and now in order to lift it, you don't have to be able to lift a thousand pounds. You only have to be able to lift 200, which uh, may make it go from the realm of impossible for a person to do to possible for a very strong person to do. Or you could imagine maybe um, the object weighed a hundred pounds, and that could go from difficult for an ordinary person to do to very, very easy for an ordinary person to do. So. Um, you might wonder, like, okay, are, is this real? Like, are, is this actually something we can do? Are we getting something for free here? So um, why not take, for instance, 100 pulleys and have your rope go over 100 pulleys so that it's even easier to lift? The piano will basically just lift off the ground. It'll float away. Um, well, so eventually friction is a problem. So um, if we have just a couple pulleys, we can ignore that maybe. But friction becomes a big deal as you add more. Um, and then um, even if friction weren't a big deal, you're still not exactly getting something for nothing here. Because if you imagine having to do this, um, in the, the first couple of cases, you are only you know moving the piano through whatever height you are pulling the rope. But if you imagine what's going on in this last case, you're going to end up needing a big coil of rope um, down here as you are lifting up all five pieces of this rope um, at once. When the piano goes up a meter, you have to pull five meters of rope in order to uh, make the, the piano move. Okay, so you're not actually getting something for nothing. You're able to exert a smaller force, but you have to do that for a much longer distance. Now, often that's a, a trade-off that we're perfectly willing to do. If you're taking a force that you cannot exert um, and you are changing it so that it's a force that is you know possible to exert, then you may be perfectly willing to do a lot more um, work at pulling the rope for a much longer distance. But um, you are, in fact, not getting anything for free here. You have to um, do extra pulling of the rope um, in order to you know, get that easier, um, in, in order to not be able to exert such a large force. So um, there's a trade-off there, but usually it's worthwhile. The key thing is that each of these tensions that is being exerted on the piano is going to add together um, in order to be able to lift the piano off the ground.